seeing you here again. My name is Luke de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this new video, I'm going to talk about calculating the net present value when we have different periodical discount rates. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So what's happening? In the previous examples, we calculated the net present value and we assumed that the discount rate or the rate that we used for our calculations was constant over all the periods. And one of my students asked me, sir, what happens if the discount rate changes? How do we do these calculations? In order to show you that, let's look at a simple exercise. And here we start again with 100 euro or 100 dollars. What we're going to do now is to calculate what is the future value of this 100 euro when we look at year one with an interest rate of 50%, year two with an interest rate of 12.5%, and year three with an interest rate of 10.5%. First, we start with a 15%. So we calculate 100 times 1 plus. 0 0.15, which gives us 115 euro. And we put it here, so we have 150, sorry, not percent, but euro. So that's the first element that we have. What do we do now? Instead of multiplying again with 1.15, we have to apply the new interest rate. So what we're going to do is to multiply 115 with 1 plus 0 0.125. And this gives us a result which is equal to 129.98 euro. That's the next value here, 129.98. And we do the same, we apply the same principle for the last number. So now we multiply 129.98, 129.98, we multiply with 1 plus 0 0.105, which gives us the last value, which is 142.96. We see here now the future values of the 100 euro over these three periods. Basically, it's the same principle, but we just do the calculation using those different discount rates. What do we have to do now? This means after year one, the 100 euro became 115 euro. So when I have 100 euro here, I have to divide by 1.15 which is approximately equal to 0 0.8696, which is in fact the discount factor. This is the discount factor for year one. We do the same thing here. Now we find that we have to divide by 1.2998, which is approximately equal to 0 0.7729. And in the last case, we do the same thing. We divide by 1.42 and we find the discount rate of 0 0.6995. And you see, we have now different discount rates. And we have to apply these discount rates to calculate the discounted values when we have different cash flows in these different situations. Let's do that in the next part of this video. So this is the table with the different cash flows over time. I still have for year one the 15%, which gives me a discount factor of 0 0.8696. For year two, I have the 12.5% which gives us a discount factor of 0 0.7729. And finally, in year three, we have a rate of 
and we get a discount factor of 0 0.6995. I looked at the initial investment of 55,000 with a minus sign, of course, and we have cash flows for year one 25,500, 30,500, and 35,500. What we have to do now is to calculate the discounted cash flows. So we calculate the discounted cash flows, DCF I. What I do with the first one, I multiply 25,500 with the discount factor 0 0.8696, which gives me a discounted factor, a value of 22,174. We do the same thing for the second year. So we multiply 30,500 with 0 0.7729 and we find 22,575. And we do the same thing for the third cash flow. We multiply 35,500 with 0 0.6995. And here we get 24,832. What we want to calculate now is the sum of the discount to cash flows. So the sum of the discounted cash flows is the sum of those three parameters, which gives us 72,581. And to calculate the net present value, I subtract the investment, so I subtract 55,000 from this, so minus 55,000, which gives us a net present value, which is equal to 15,581. The calculations are the same, the only difference is that we have to consider these different interest rates that we use to calculate the discount factors. We've calculated the discounted cash flows, we add them, and we find the net present value. It's a little bit more complex than when we use the classical formulas, because when we have the same discount rate over all years, it's of course easier to do the calculation. The next thing that we are going to do is to look at these calculations, applying Excel, and doing the simple calculations and also using the integrated net present value formula that is available in Excel. So that was it for this new video. We looked at the net present value when we have different discount values, different discount rates over the different periods, and we found the principle how to deal with that. We will look at it a little bit later in Excel, how to find out to find these discount rates in an easier way. So that's it for this video. I thank you very much. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Bye bye.